Welcome to iLectures Online, and here's a good example of how to work with magnetic fields and moving charges within those magnetic fields. Uh, here we have an example where we have a particle with a mass of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, that's about 1.5 grams, and a charge of 0.2 microcoulombs. And it moves at a velocity of 5 times 10 to the third meters per second, so 5 kilometers per second, uh, through that magnetic field in the positive y direction, so straight up. And the magnetic field exists there, and the B field has the magnitude of two Teslas in the x direction and one Tesla in the negative y direction. What will be the direction and the magnitude of the acceleration? So assuming that that moving particle feels a force, we need to find the magnitude of the force, and once we know the magnitude of the force, we'll use F equals ma, Newton's second law, to find the acceleration on that particle. So first let's make a sketch to see what's going on here. So we have a magnetic field that has the components of two Teslas in the positive x direction and a minus one Tesla in the minus y direction. So that kind of looks like this. So two, two Teslas in the x direction, minus one in the y direction. So the magnetic field is kind of like in this direction, like so. In such a way that if I take one of those vector components representing the B field, so here's our B field right there, then I can see that the B field has an X and a Y component. So here would be the X component of the B field, and there would be the Y component of the B field. So that would be the B in the X direction component, and this would be the B field in the Y direction component. All right, now we have a charged particle. It's, a posit it's positively charged, and it's moving in a positive y direction. So representing the particle right here, it's positively charged, moving in the positive y direction. Now, you can see that the direction of the movement of the particle is parallel to the, B, to the y component, um, the perpendicular component of the B field. So this component is not going to produce any forces on this, on this particle. This component, well, because this component is perpendicular to the direction of the motion of that particle. All right, so then we can say that the magnitude of the force, F, or let's write down the equation first, F is equal to Q times V times B. Um, and of course, since it's a vector, we'll use the vector or the cross product right here. And notice that the only component that's of interest to us is the X component because the Y component will not contribute any force. So there you go, that's the best way to look at it. Now we need to know the direction of that force. And so we use our right hand rule because it's a positive charge. We move our fingers or point our fingers in the direction of the velocity. Then we curl fingers in the direction of the B field. And we can see then that the force would be into the board. Let me use the red color here so I can indicate here the force on this particle will be into the board. The magnitude of the force uh, is equal to F, like so, that's the magnitude, is equal to Q, V, B in the X direction, times the sine of the angle between the two, and notice that here's the angle between the two, theta, which is equal to 90 degrees, and of course the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, so we need to ignore that part. Now we plug in the numbers, so the magnitude of the force, is equal to the charge, which is 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, times the velocity, which is 5 times 10 to the third meters per second. And then we multiply times the B component of the magnetic field, the B component, I mean the X component, which is right here, which is 2 Teslas, 2.0 Teslas. There we go. That should give us the magnitude. And let's see, yes, I brought my calculator this time. So let's see how big that force is. We have a 0.2 e to the 6 minus times 5 e to the third power equals and then uh, times 2 equals and it looks like 2 times 10 to the minus 3. So the force is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons, which is 2 millinewtons. There we go. So now we know the force and we know the direction. Now we need to know the acceleration, the magnitude of acceleration, and the direction of acceleration. All right, so using Newton's second law, F is equal to M times A. Notice that F is a vector quantity, and so is acceleration. Solving that for A, we can say that the acceleration is equal to the magnitude and the direction of the force divided by the mass. 
And so knowing that the force here is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, newtons. Now what would be the direction of that force? Well, the direction is into the board. So if we assume, let's see here, we have x, x and y is like this, then z would be out. So the positive z direction is out of the board, the negative z direction is into the board, so I can say that would be a minus 2 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons in the z direction, which is k, ijk, like so. And then we divide that by the mass of the particle. The mass of the particle is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. And so we divide that by 1.5 e to the 3 minus equals, and it looks like 1.33 meters per second squared. Now it's going to be minus because it's going to be in the negative z direction, and then we have to indicate the direction like that, and that is it. So should be a little better job putting the negative in there so you can see it. Let's put it like that. There you go. Can't forget the negative. So it's negative because it's into the board. That's the negative z direction. This is the positive z direction, and the acceleration will be 1.33 meters per second squared in the negative z direction. And that's how you do a problem like that. Okay, for those who were wondering where, these new, uh, where the Newton came from in this answer, of course, we can assume that since we're looking for force, the answer will be in terms of Newtons. Let's see if the units actually work out. So we have coulombs times meters per second times teslas. So the definition of a tesla, one tesla, is equal to a Newton per amp times meters. So that's the definition of a tesla. And if we now plug in the units that we have, so we had the units of coulombs over here, and we multiply that times uh, meters per second for the velocity, and then we multiply that times a tesla, when a tesla is a newton per amp times meters, what is that equal to? All right, notice already that we have meters and meters that cancels out. And an amp is a coulomb per second, so we can replace that, so we can say this is equal to a coulomb, Oop, there we go, times 1 over seconds, times a newton. Of course, amp is now a coulomb per second. And of course, the 1 over seconds in the denominator, the second comes up, so this is equal to a coulomb times 1 over seconds times newtons seconds over coulombs. And now you can see that the seconds cancel out and so do the coulombs cancel out and finally end up with newtons. So that's why when you multiply coulombs times meters per second times teslas, the units you get is newtons and those are the, the units for force. So, just in case you're wondering. Now, what if you're wondering about this one? Now, acceleration, of course, is newtons per kilograms, uh, right? So we have the units of newtons divided by kilograms. And by definition, if you remember from mechanics, that the unit of newtons is kilograms meters per second squared, right? Because a newton is the force that gives a mass of one kilogram, the acceleration of one meters per second squared, so meters per second squared, and divide this by kilograms. Notice that the kilograms cancel out. I like to put brackets around it so to indicate I'm dealing with units. And of course, then the acceleration, the units of acceleration will be meters per second squared. And that's what we got. So just in case you're wondering, the units do come out.